okay. So now we're gonna welcome the one, the only, Abby Ayuson! Thank you. your heads, close your eyes, and let's just start off the night with prayer. God, thank you so much that uh, you long to spend time with us and to encounter us. And God, we just pray that only your words would be heard, Jesus, and nothing of my own. I pray that you would just speak to them, speak to us, open our hearts, God, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... Uh, a couple weeks ago, Atawana told me that I can share whatever I want. So I was thinking about what I wanted to share. And I was overwhelmed because there's literally a million things that are, is on my heart, a million things I could say to you guys. So I asked myself if this was the last message I could ever say to you guys, if this was, if I literally dropped dead after this talk, what is it that like I'd want to say to you guys, what do I think is the most important foundational aspect of our faith, of the Christian faith? And so I came to the conclusion that what I want to talk about is rain. I want to talk about rain, not like a king's rain, but rain as in rain water. Um, so we have these pursuit youth hoodies you've probably seen it they're black they say pursuit and on the back of it is a verse that's uh it's hosea 6 3 and it's going to be up on the screen and um i want us to read this verse together but um a little put a little twist on it when you see the word rain i want you to yell the word rain as loud as you possibly can i'll count you down i'll i'll point the mic to you when it's time for you to yell but let's read this together you guys ready let out your energy with this yell okay so hosea 6 3 it says let us acknowledge the lord let us press on to acknowledge him as surely as the sun rises he will appear he will come to us like the winter Rain. like the spring that water the earth so i'm going to talk about <laughs> good good and i'm going to talk about why why the most important thing you can do in life is to soak in the rain every single day now if you haven't gotten it by now i'm referring to rain as the analogy of soaking in the presence of God, aka the secret place, spending alone time with Jesus behind closed doors where you're intimate with him and you're enjoying his presence. And I want to talk about why it makes a difference when you actually do this, when you actually spend time alone with him. So let me start by telling you what I think is the biggest downfall when it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to um, people who call themselves Christian, it's that when it comes to spending time with Jesus and being in true relationship with God, so many people have become spectators rather than active participants. They become spectators rather than active participants, meaning they watch from afar instead of participating in what it means to actually pursue Jesus and be in relationship with him. Now going with this rain analogy, did you know that there are two ways to know that it's raining? It's going to blow your mind. Two ways to know that it's raining. The first way is someone can tell you that it's raining. 
I know, crazy, amazing. Um, so the first way someone can tell you that it's raining in the same way that I could be as dry as a bone inside this building and point out the window and go, hey, look, everybody, it's raining. But then other times, other times somebody walks into a room and they're just drenched and soaking wet in the rain. And they don't need to convince you. They don't need to tell you it's raining because they themselves are the evidence that it's raining. And in the same way, people who are simply spectators of Jesus, who don't soak in the presence of God, who don't get alone with Jesus, when they tell you how much God loves you and how amazing it is to be in relationship with God, it's like pointing out the window and going, hey, look, everybody, it's raining. But then there's others. Then there's others who actually soak in the presence of God. And they actually step into the rain and experience him. And when they come back soaked and tell you how sweet it is to be loved by God and to, be, and to love him, you look at them and you go, I can tell. I can tell his presence. Some people tell others without experiencing it, other people experience it and are drenched in it and everybody sees it by their peace, by their joy, by the way they're different from the people around them, by the fruit of the spirit, they're just drenched in it. And in fact, people who are, who are drenched in the rain, they can't help but make a trail of water every, every step they take. And in the same way, what's amazing is that people who constantly soak in the presence of God and are filled with the Holy Spirit, which is God in us, is they can effortlessly bring down his presence wherever they go. It's like when people are dripping in rainwater, it inevitably comes off of them, every step they take. In fact, they mess up the whole room just because they're drenched and soaking wet in rain. Now, a little aside, there's been a lot of injustices lately. I'm pretty sure all of us are aware of this. There's been a lot of racism. God's been revealing like a lot of evil in this world in the past weeks, years, past months. And we, especially we as a generation, we want, we want to do something about it. But it feels out of our reach. It feels like a big task. But what I want to tell you is if you want to reach people this way, horizontally, you need to first reach vertically to God. In the same way that rain falls vertically before it spreads horizontally, if you want to reach people farther than you can ever imagine, then you need to reach up first. That we need to soak in the rain before it falls off of us and touches the people around us. And there's multiple examples in the Bible um, of people who are soaked in the presence of God, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, and the impact that they actually have on the people around them. How many of you love the Bible? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Give it up for the Bible. So the first example that came to mind was King David. He's an example of somebody, the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart, somebody who soaked in the presence of God, and he wasn't perfect, but it says he was a man after God's own heart and he had a friend named Saul and 1 Samuel 16 23 says whenever that tormenting spirit from God whenever the tormenting spirit troubled Saul David would play the harp then Saul would feel better and the tormenting spirit would go away now fun fact number one about soaking anyone who serves for example if you serve in a church if you if you serve God in any capacity um, for example, for our worship team, if you sing or play an instrument, just like David played the harp, you can lead people into the presence of God and chains can actually fall. David was drenched in the rain and it fell off of him and touched Saul and set him free. The second example, I love this example. Um, it's Moses on Mount Sinai. So Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights soaking in the presence of God on a mountain. 
And in Exodus 34, it says that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, two tablets of covenant in his, of the law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. I love that. He wasn't aware that he was, his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. And it even says in the next verse that Aaron and the Israelites looked at Moses and behold, his face was radiant that they were, and they were afraid to approach him. Fun fact number two about soaking, when you spend time soaking in the presence of God, people will notice a change in your radiance, in your life, in the way you talk, in the way you carry yourself, you'll be different from the crowd. And lastly, in the book of Acts, after the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and filled the disciples, it says that Peter was addressing the big crowd that, that had formed. Um, and it says that he preached a simple message and it, where they were cut to the heart. And in Acts 2.41, it says that those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 3,000 were added to their number that day. And it's not about the words that Peter said. It's the fact that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, soaked in the presence, and the Holy Spirit was touching the hearts of these people. And fun fact number three about soaking is who is in you makes a greater impact than what you say. You could try and do and say things in your own flesh and strength, but... The truth is the Holy Spirit will make a greater impact in your life than your flesh ever could. And these are examples of people who soaked in the presence, soaked in the rain, and the way they lived their life was evidence of the way the rain fell off of them and touched the people around them. Now I'm going to wrap up soon, but you know I always tell certain people that the only prayer that I have for my future kids um, and not just my kids, but for the people I love and for you guys, the only prayer I have is this, is that you would be people who love to be alone with Jesus, that you be people who love to be alone with Jesus. Because if Jesus is your everything, I literally have no concern for what you're going to do in life because the most important thing in life is that God has our full attention. Now, if you're in high school or college or not in school and you don't know what to do next or maybe you thought you knew and now you don't or you're confused, I want to tell you something comforting about soaking is that it's more important that God has our full attention than us knowing what to do next. It's more important that he has our full attention than us knowing what step to take because he'll, he'll reveal that to you as long as he has your attention. And I don't know what your faith background is. I don't know if you've been to Sunday every single, been to church every Sunday of your life, or if you've never been to church. You're welcome here either way. But I do know this. When I was 14, something changed for me. I remember I was an extremely, like, unbelievably shy kid. Um, and I didn't like going to church Church to me was a place where you dress up and socialize and I hated both of those things with a passion as a kid. So I remember um, youth was on Fridays before. My two friends would come over, they'd pick up my brother and they'd go to youth. But I would stay home because like I said, I don't want to socialize. I don't want to be at this youth thing. And then I remember um, one Friday when youth was on a Friday, they literally, like I was in my pajamas, I had no shoes on, they literally picked me up physically and dragged me to the car against my will and I was fighting them. They picked up my shoes, brought me to youth, and I actually really liked it. I loved going to youth and I went to youth like every single week since then. And then this, this random woman named Buena Tupe <laughs> took over our youth. <laughs> Give it up for Ate Buena. <laughs> yeah. I remember Buena, Buena took over our youth, and I was so fascinated by the way that she lived her life. I was so fascinated by the way that she would talk about the importance of getting alone with God and spending time with him and reading the word. And I saw something different in her, and that was the Holy Spirit. That was her, the rain that she was soaking in, falling off of her and touching 
me. So nine years ago, I tried seeking Jesus like in a serious way for myself. I started, I remember I started listening to sermons on YouTube by this guy named Francis Chan. And I was so obsessed with it. I would watch sermon after sermon. I think I've watched every single one of his older sermons on YouTube. I would start reading the Bible. I would write in a journal things that I thought God was speaking to me. I started praying and getting involved in church. And what I can vouch for, what I can vouch for through those nine years with confidence is that soaking in the presence of God has changed my life and it will change yours too. And just like me, when you make that switch from being a spectator to an active participant, you go from pointing out the window and going, look at the rain, to look at me. I'm drenched in the rain and it's the best thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And you know, being a Christian, this is really important to know, being a Christian is not about following a belief system, a set of rules, a church. It's not about any of those things. It's not about encountering a good message or a preacher. It's not even about encountering a good community. These things are necessary and important, but these things will always ebb and flow. These things may disappoint you and fail you, but there is one thing in life, there's one thing in life that will never fail you or disappoint you and that one thing is God and we need to put our trust in the only thing in life that is solid and consistent and we may fail God but God will never fail us and what's comforting to know is that God actually longs to encounter you more than you long to encounter God and you'll realize as you start to follow God that it's not just an upward trajectory. Like, you don't, life doesn't just keep getting better after you follow God. And if you're like me, there'll be times when you, like, really don't feel worthy to even come into his presence. But remember that we don't seek God because we're the ones who's worthy. We seek him because he's worthy. He died for your sins. You're the object of his obsession. He loves you guys so much. And more than anything, he longs to spend time alone with you. So moving forward, do you want to be a spectator or do you want to be an active participant? Do you want to simply look at the rain or are you ready to actually step outside and soak in the rain? And if you haven't heard of God or or have been following God, um... I just want to say you're welcome here and that this will be the best journey that you'll ever experience. Um, And there's nothing sweeter than to be in a relationship with God. So, you know, let's just end in prayer and then we'll go into our small groups. But just feel free to echo this prayer in your heart. So, God, we just come before you. Thank you that you love us simply, that your love isn't complicated, God. Thank you that we always have your full attention. We have your eyes and your ears, God, and you love to hear us and spend time with us, God. And I just pray that this won't just be a message that we hear and then we forget. I pray that we would take this to heart and actually be participants in what it means to pursue you. And I just pray for our evening and for even our camp coming up. God, thank you that um, you long to encounter us not just at camp, not just now, but um, every single day you have something to say to us. And thank you for your love and for everybody here. And thank you that they're here for a reason. In Jesus' name, amen.